educating me on all things energy in this uh, great state of uh, North Dakota. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Scott. Great to be with you. Yeah, it's, that- a great, it's a good day for those of us that get our paycheck from the government because we, we get to take what we, what we earn on all those other days and go to the mall. At least our children do. And uh, <laughs> make it a true holiday for the retailers. Uh, how does that work? I'm not sure, but anyway. I don't know either, doggone it. Of course, I've never taken the President's Day off yet because it's a great day to catch up at the office, but it's, a, it's lonely. So let's talk a little bit about last week. Um, first of all, just the, the whole event itself with Rick Santorum's visit, your, your assessment of everything. Well, a few things, Scott. And the first thing I'd say, and, and this is really kudos to you for – for both coming up with the idea and um, and inviting Senator Santorum to come to Tioga, North Dakota, um, you can go a lot of places, get a lot more attention, and have a lot bigger crowds. Although I don't know that you could get uh, <laughs> a more impressive crowd than was at that school. But Tioga, North Dakota, because it speaks volumes. First of all, I think of the character of Rick Santorum that he would come to a small town that where while you can land a jet, you, it was hard to take off, and you know there's some certainly some logistical challenges to all of that. But he did it because I think it reflects the genuineness of the guy that he would come to a rural community, and secondly, because of course it is the capital in many respects of oil in North Dakota, and um, illustrates just what the potential is for not only for northwestern North Dakota, as he said on, on my website, but also for our country. And so I think, first of all, I think that was genius. You know, it's a funny thing as I reflect on the day, though, Scott. He was a full day in North Dakota. He spent the night, as you know, in Fargo, not by design, but somewhat by necessity. Um, started out early, ended late. The guy never took a nap that I know of. And... uh and you think, well, okay, this seems a bit much. It's some would say disorganized. You see that a lot in uh, in stories about his campaign. When they say disorganized, they don't mean he's disorganized. It means that there's a lack of organization, of structure, and it might not be as efficient as some uh, presidential candidates whose every second is timed, you know, right down to the T to make sure that they make take advantage of every moment and every national media interview and all of those things. And and here was a guy. I think it sums up. There are a couple of anecdotes, and I'm sure we can share them, Scott. But here's a guy who, when everybody else forgot to grab the to-go boxes out of the cafeteria or the mess hall in the man camp so everybody could have a little lunch, here's the guy that might be the next president who thought to pick them up and carry them out for everybody. So no, a, uh, let, let me finish that story. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're on the bus already, but what, uh, Christy Trulson of our, of our radio station staff, uh, our station manager from Stanley, out of KTGO, she was carrying them, right? She was halfway down the hallway, and she's holding them. We catch up to her because everybody else was on the bus. She's got to be says, what kind of people do you work with making you carry this stuff? He takes them from her <laughs> and then carries well, them to the bus. Isn't that unbelievable? It, it was is, unreal. It is, it, is, it is unreal, and yet it's, of course, very natural for somebody like him. And, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not politician-like. He's not doing it for a photo op. You know the, the guy is very real, which was was which and really. But what I what I appreciate about him more than anything, Kevin, I think you saw this. He came to listen. You know, I mean, p- right. politicians very often come to talk. He came to listen, truly. No, no question about it. And you know, here's a guy that's got that wants to learn, and the best way to learn is to listen. Now he's not short of uh, wisdom himself, by the way. Uh, he was, you know, he had a lot of good things to say as well. But he certainly gets it. He certainly gets uh, the the importance of uh, energy, the importance of North Dakota uh, in this uh, in securing America's uh, energy security going forward. And uh, that was that was clear. And he certainly has the right philosophy as well when he talks about you know. Ratcheting back the 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 uh, extreme regulations of the Obama administration, creating an environment that is more conducive to profit while protecting our cultural and natural resources and our environmental resources and protecting our citizens, he didn't confuse that with economic opportunity and uh, and the extreme agenda of the left. So I, I was very impressed. You've been a part of a lot of political events in North Dakota. Obviously, we've had president, we've had presidents' visits, we've had conventions, we've had a lot of. I mean, put that on the scale as far as uh, you know uh, the 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 outpouring of support and uh, and the and the events itself. I mean, is is he on the radar? Unlike uh, anything you expected. Well, he's certainly not more than I expected. Um, I'm delighted that he is. 
uh, I, you know, we caught him at a great time, Scott. Of course, we caught him in <laughs> probably at the peak of the upswing of his uh, campaign because if you look at the polls and the way they it's tracked, I mean, here's a guy that was in, not just in low numbers, he was in low single digits, you know, two, three months ago in fourth place out of the current four, and now he's in first place in high double digits, and that's just been a you know, natural progression. We caught him definitely on the upswing going into to Michigan, so timing is everything, and um, and so he's clearly on the radar. In terms of the outpouring of support, I don't know that I have seen this level of sort of personal, genuine affection for a person as I as I see in uh, the people supporting Rick Santorum. But it's clearly, there was a lot of affection for George W. Bush, uh, and when you know, I'll never forget that that Fargo rally right after the State of the Union address where he came to, he started out his campaign on uh, reforming Social Security. You and I were there covering it on the radio. Um, that, that was obviously fantastic, but that, that's different when you have a sitting president. I, I flew on Air Force Two with Dan Quayle to Fargo uh, when he was vice president, and we had a huge rally in the Civic Center, and that was fun. But but this was more personal, Scott. This is this is a guy who doesn't have Secret Service detail yet. This is a guy whose half of whose staff are his two children. You know, that are traveling with him. There's something different when you're at that level with a person than than when the barriers start going up, the walls start going up, uh, somewhat by necessity, of course. I want to uh, I want to ask you more about this, and I know you you got a tight time frame, but just hang on. We'll t- take you for a few more minutes into the next segment because Kevin right. did at that at that uh, rally in Fargo announce his support. And uh, Kevin has also invited the other candidates as well, did so uh, uh, you know, earlier this month, and uh, has received a response from the Romney campaign about that. We're going to talk about that, too, so will others follow. By the way, Ron Paul was here all weekend out west uh, and uh, making more stops today, so might there be others? We'll talk about that as we continue, plus uh, the Whitney Houston controversy for Chris Christmas. Stay tuned. Two favorite TV moments of the weekend, the Whitney Houston funeral. And uh, Newt Gingrich on Fox News Sunday coming up on the program. The part I like most about Newt Gingrich, I, I like it when any elected leader gets on national television and says two words, North Dakota. I love it. Absolutely love it. And uh, Newt did talking about the bird brain prosecution that uh, Tim Burden, Tim Burden, the uh, Obama Department, the Justice Department, U.S. Attorney launched, which, by the way, has been thrown out of court now. Amazing it's not getting more attention than it has, but he's been rebuked by a judge on that whole case. So we have that coming up. We have the Chris Christie uh, controversy over the flags and half staff in New Jersey because of Whitney Houston. We have a preview on a way for you to quit smoking with my friend Mark Skogerbo here coming up in a couple of minutes. We have Kent Conrad on Rick Santorum and Rick Santorum on the theology of Barack Obama. We have Stephen Moore, the Wall Street Journal, who will be here a week from tomorrow. He, by the way, will be touring coal country, oil country, and talking economic outlook in uh, North Dakota and Fargo next Tuesday. Don't want to miss that. Kelly Schmidt on her big announcement and uh, much more. Plus, our question of the day, who's your favorite president? Here's how I ask. Top three. Then you don't have to do my deal of modern day versus founder types. Or whatever. Just name your top three. Brian says it's Reagan, Clinton, and Bush 41. Hmm. Bush 41 was a good His heart was in the right place. No question. I have Ronald Reagan, Abe, and Teddy. But I feel bad about 43. I just should have done top five. Anyway, more with Kevin Kramer here. Kevin, North Dakota Public Service Commissioner, candidate for uh, Congress. Wrapping up our conversation with him. And I uh, wanted to specifically ask, you, you talked about it as far as the political event. You uh, were the MC for the event on Wednesday night. And during that, correct me if I'm wrong, announced your support for Rick Santorum, correct? I, I, I did. I did. Senator Santorum had called me the uh, week before his visit and asked me to endorse him, asked if I would support him. Um, and I told him at the time that my that Chris and I, my wife and I, both had decided we would be supporting him. So I, I gave him my commitment. I don't think the campaign has put anything out. But, yes, I did announce it that night. And um, you're, you're rather lonely right now as far as a statewide <laughs> elected official in the Rick Santorum camp, are you not? Well, I'm glad to say I was, I'm first. Um, hopefully others will follow. I, I quite certain at least one other one will. Several, of course, have already pledged their support for uh, Governor Romney. There seemed to be a little bit of a parade going there uh, uh, here a few weeks ago, which is fine. Uh, Governor Romney would be a much better president than the one we have now, uh, as would Speaker Gingrich and uh, Congressman Paul, for that matter, would all be much better than the one we have. But I, I feel strongly, Scott, and I, I, I don't do neutral. You know, I, being on the ballot this time, running for Congress, a lot of people think it's not wise to 
you know, to start endorsing candidates. But, you know, I, I don't do neutral, Scott. I I like to back things and people and positions and policies I believe strongly in. And, and one of the reasons I'm supporting uh, Rick Santorum is because he does, too. He doesn't do neutral very well either. And, you know, all you have to do is talk to him to know that's the case. But I, I like him a lot. Guy. Like first of all, I like his genuineness. He's the real deal. He's an authentic guy. I think we saw that. We all saw that the other day, uh, in many many ways. Um, and I think that's what's resonating with voters across the country. But here's the fundamental thing for me: is I trust him. I trust Rick Santorum. This is a guy who was always pro life. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't pro choice before he was pro life. He was always pro life. Here's a guy who always opposed cap and trade. Never bought in. Never drank the Kool Aid. The, the it's our fault. The globe is warming, and you know the world is coming to an end. He never drank that Kool Aid. Not 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 once. He's always been on the right side of cap and trade. This is a guy who was. Uh, this is a guy who who was against government run health care before it was cool to be against government health run government run health care. So while uh, while other candidates running for president, you know forwarded and passed a government-run health care in their state or, you know, uh, suggested it was a good idea in Congress. This guy's never been there. He's always been opposed to it. And so, when you know, you don't even have to agree with somebody on every topic, and I certainly don't agree with Rick Santorum on every topic. But I know where he stands on every topic, and I can trust when he says he supports something I support or opposes something I oppose that that's his position, and, and I don't have to worry about somebody else talking him out of it later. Do you think, given uh, the outpouring of support that you saw on Wednesday, that he, I mean, is, if, if there was a poll taken right now, who would be leading in North Dakota? Yeah, that's a good question. I, um, you know, it's hard to say, but I, I think he'd do very well in North Dakota right now. He'd probably carry North Dakota if it, was a, if it was a poll or if it was a primary. But one of the things we have to remember is that we don't have a presidential primary anymore. And I read Lloyd Omdahl's piece over the weekend. He's wrong about one point, or he's not wrong, but he left out an important point. We had a presidential primary in 1996, quite recently, and it, it resulted in a lot of activity for presidential candidates. I wish we had one again. Uh, the caucuses are... are are more organizational oriented and less sort of open democracy. But, but I like the, the, the caucuses are fine, and I think uh, you know we'll have to see who has the stronger organization on the ground gets their people to the caucuses. I think that the Ron Paul campaign has certainly been organized for a long time here, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But there's no question that a major visit like Rick Santorum, and I'm not talking about a swoop in, swoop out. This is a guy that spent the day here, spent the night here. Um, that's going to go a long ways in the hearts and minds of people. But I expect other candidates to be here before March 6th as well. Now, you uh, invited all of them uh, back back in early February, and you've received a response from the Mitt Romney campaign. By the way, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were a Mitt Romney guy last time, right? I was not, actually. You were not? With, uh, okay. okay. Romney. I was not. I, I, was, I, was, uh, I actually was the chairman for um, Mayor Giuliani. In North Dakota, I remember that early on, but I was—I thought later you you um, you no, ultimately. I, I ended up I ended up joining up with uh, actually McCain? with our eventual nominee with John McCain. I had held a news conference in a couple of places in the state uh, with uh, at the time a, a couple of celebrities from outside of the state, and uh, we did get behind John McCain. But no, but first uh, I was with Giuliani. Got it. Okay. So um, I forgot my previous question for you. The point was being that my invitation. What I did is I invited all four of the current presidential candidates specifically to come out to the Bakken to see what's going on in energy in the energy field and to talk to us. To, to he listened much like Rick Santorum did to the people in the Bakken, to people in the oil industry, people in the coal industry, people that know how to do energy development and energy security for our country. And, uh, because I think that's what North Dakota has to offer this country more than anything else, is, along with how you feed a hungry world. And um, so, uh, you know, it was great to have to have Senator Santorum come. It, it's, it was great yesterday, uh, as you as you know, Ron Paul was in Williston yesterday, and then heading to Bismarck, you know, down to Dickinson and over to Bismarck today. Um, and I did receive a response uh, yesterday from uh, Mitt Romney's campaign saying, "Thank you, uh, we'll keep it." Uh, under consideration, so it's you know kind of a standard response, but it was a response and said uh, they'll keep me informed and keep the information on file for consideration for planning of uh, of visits to the area. So now, uh, by the think, way, you know, by, by the way, Newt Gingrich has told us on the program that he is coming to North Dakota. Didn't say when, but said he was coming to North Dakota. Told us that uh, uh, the Monday before the Minnesota caucus. So well, and I'd sure love to have him because you know here's a guy who's uh, you know in the case of. 
of the speaker who's been, you know had the drill ba- drill here drill now mantra for a long time and I think understands the oil development and its its role in energy security I'd love to have him see it firsthand and have people tell their story to him and and uh, he'd like uh, Senator Santorum he'd probably pick up a couple of nuggets that would help him uh, not only on the campaign trail but as should he become president of the United States so yeah I've invited all of them I'm glad that a couple have come whether it was my invitation or something else that prompted them uh, you know, I, I want to do for them, Scott, what I've done for you and help educate them about energy development in North Dakota. Well, because it's what the country needs. It really is. And I, I appreciate the the, uh, the tutelage. It's been great. All right, Kev, take care. Good to talk to you. We'll talk again soon. When we get closer to the convention and uh, the June vote, we'll be talking lots more with Kevin and the other candidates out there.